What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm showing you my entire Air Jordan 1 collection. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that the Air Jordan 1 is my favorite sneaker silhouette of all time. In fact, the Bread Jordan 1s are my favorite sneaker of all time. This shoe is just so perfectly designed and you can wear it with pretty much anything. It doesn't get much better than a pair of Jordan 1s. And I know I say that whenever I talk about Jordan 1s and you guys have probably heard me say that a million times. So I'm gonna try and hold myself back through this video because obviously all the shoes in this video are Jordan 1s. But I've just been so happy with the Jordan 1 releases over the last like two to three years. We've gotten so many classic retros and we've gotten so many great new colorways. I just felt like it was time to do a Jordan 1 collection video. Also, the order of this list is somewhat arbitrary. I've got all the shoes laid out in front of me on the floor and I'm just kind of grabbing them as I go. So without further ado, let's start things off. And what better way to start things off than the Bread Air Jordan 1s. Like I said, the Bread 1s are my favorite sneaker of all time. And I know it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to start out the video or start out the list with my favorite shoe of all time. I should probably put it at the end, but I just felt like it's such a good foundation to base the rest of the list on. It's just a perfect way to start. As the name would suggest, the Air Jordan 1s are Michael Jordan's first signature shoe, and this of course being the bread colorway or the band colorway is one of the most classic of the Air Jordan 1s. This of course is the 2016 remastered release, and it comes with some really nice tumbled leather on the red portions of the shoe. I actually bought three pairs of this shoe, one to rock and two to stock. But then uh, one month rent was particularly bad, or I guess I just spent too much money on shoes that month, so I had to let one of the pairs go. And I've really regretted that, especially since the prices are so crazy high right now, and the 2016 version is just such a clean version of the bread once. But you live and you learn, and I still have a pair on ice, so I'm not doing too bad. Next up is the Flyknit Bread Once. Again, a classic colorway, an interesting and unique implementation of that colorway to say the least. Flying it is definitely an interesting material to use on the Air Jordan 1s. From a distance, this shoe does look just like a regular pair of breads, and that's part of the appeal of this colorway of the Flying It 1s. But as much as people were hating on this shoe when it first dropped, I actually think it's a pretty great sneaker. It's super comfortable, and even though I don't wear it as much as my regular bread ones, I still break it out every so often. It's also got this interesting black leather sock liner, which I'm not sure exactly why it's there, but I guess it makes the inside of the shoe look more premium. It's an interesting detail, and one that I don't totally get, but I don't hate it. The Flyknit ones are also great for summer because, of course, they're pretty breathable. After that, we've got the Wheat Air Jordan ones. Jordan Brand actually gifted me this shoe like a month before release, and I was really stoked on it because I just think it's a really nicely made shoe. This golden, like, Timberland colored suede or nubuck genuinely feels really soft at the touch, and I'm surprised that it went on sale because it's actually a really nice shoe. I do think that there could have been some color variation on the upper of the shoe, like maybe some slightly darker suedes or darker nubucks just to differentiate the different parts of the sneaker, but overall, it's a pretty clean and minimal sneaker, and the attention to detail, like this debossed Air Jordan logo, is pretty excellent. And if you can't find your pair of Tims one morning, this is not a bad alternative. Next is the 2018 Shadow Ones. Like the Bread Ones, I doubled up on this shoe because it wasn't too hard to get and I feel like it's a shoe that you can wear all year round with pretty much anything. Although I don't like the Shadow Ones as much as the Breads or the Royals, it's still really excellent color blocking and I really dig the sort of low-key look that it has. This is almost a shoe that I would be willing to wear to a formal occasion. Not every formal occasion, but you know, friend's wedding or something like that maybe. You still got some of that low-key heat but you're not standing out too much. I think it's an all-around excellent shoe. Of course, following that up, you've got the 2017 Royal Ones. This is probably my most worn pair of Air Jordan Ones behind the Bread Ones. And the quality on this shoe is excellent. The tumbled leather on the toe and on the Nike swoosh is super soft. For some reason, the tumbled leather on the heel isn't as soft, and maybe that's because it's stretched around the back of the shoe. I'm not totally sure, but it's still a pretty nicely done sneaker. I also doubled up on my pair of 2017 Royals because you never know when you're gonna need another pair. And red and blue are my two favorite colors. You knew the Royals had to be pretty high up on the list. In the same color blocking as the Royals, we've got the Crimson Tint Ones. The quality of the Crimson Tint Ones is just so far below that of the Royals and the Breads and the Shadows. It just doesn't feel anything like them, and it's a lot more plasticky and hard to the touch. However, I do love this color blocking of this primarily black upper with accent colors on the swoosh, on the toe, and on the heel. And although the Crimson Tints were a shoe that I was really anticipating, once I got them in hand, I kind of noticed that they're like a super flesh tone colored, at least my flesh tone. And it's not my favorite colorway in the world, but it's not bad. It's definitely more of like a peach than a crimson. I also kind of regret switching out the black laces for green laces. They just don't look as good. I, I thought I'd try something, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, the green laces came in the box, so this was something that Jordan Brand expected people to do. But now that I'm seeing it, now that I've worn it, I'm gonna switch them back. The crimson tint is a good colorway, but definitely not a great colorway. Next are the Pine Green Air Jordan 1s. I'm not a huge green fan and I'm definitely not a Celtics fan, 
but I've got to say the green on this shoe and the color blocking on this shoe is excellent. The way the green plays off the sail and the black I just think looks so clean. And this is a shoe that I wear whenever there's like an Eagles game or something on. I'm not really an Eagles fan, I'm a Ravens fan, but I live in Philly so gotta have some green stuff. But that's obviously not the reason I have this colorway. I just think the green comes off really nice on this shoe and it's a very easy sneaker to rock. Of course, where there are pine greens, there are usually court purples as well. And the court purples are one of my favorite Air Jordan ones in my collection, mainly because I love purple, but also because I'm a Ravens fan. Um, the only problem is, is that whenever I wear these to Ravens games, we lose. So I've kind of stopped doing that. I'm not saying that they're cursed, but when I went to the Chargers playoff game, I said what's up to a guy who was wearing a pair of court purples and we lost that game. So I just think if you're wearing court purples, stay away from Baltimore, just get out of there. Other than that, great shoe, love it. Next is the 2016 Black Toe Ones. This is another classic retro Air Jordan 1 colorway and one that I don't think gets enough love. It might not be everyone's favorite Air Jordan 1, but it definitely deserves a place in everyone's collection. It's understated, it's clean, it's got red, black, and white. I mean, what else can you want from a pair of Jordan 1s? The one downside, in my opinion, of the 2016 Black Toe Ones is that they didn't use the same leather quality that they used on the 2016 Breads, which kind of sucks. But at the end of the day, most of the leather used on shoes in general isn't great leather, so it's not that big of a deal. After that, we've got the Bread Toe Ones. Now, I know I just said that the Black Toes deserve more love, but I kind of think I prefer the Bread Toes to the Black Toes. For me, it's literally just the addition of this red accent on the toe. I think that really balances out the color blocking of the shoe and it's such a subtle improvement But in my opinion, it really makes the shoe plus the leather is slightly tumbled and I like most people I'm a sucker for tumbled leather even though tumbled leather doesn't really mean anything for the quality of the leather after that We've got the Nigel Sylvester Air Jordan ones Nigel Sylvester is a BMX biker who rose to prominence through YouTube Which is pretty cool This shoe is one of his collaborations with Jordan brand and is designed to look like the pair that he wears when he goes BMX biking Which means that all the scuffs are actually accurate to the scuffs that are on his actual shoes. I don't know how I feel about artificially distressed brand new shoes. It's not my favorite look in the world, but I get the idea behind it and I like the story. One of my favorite details on this shoe is actually the mini embroidered swoosh on the toe. I think that's a really dope touch. But the main reason that I like this shoe is that when I got it, I got to meet Nigel Sylvester and he actually signed my box. Not my favorite Jordan 1, but a cool story nonetheless. Sticking with the sort of extreme sport theme, we've got the Nike SB Air Jordan 1 in the Lakers colorway. I just did a review on this pair of shoes, so if you haven't seen that yet, make sure to click the link at the top of the screen. And not only did I do a review, I actually wiped off the paint on the left side, which turns into the Chicago colorway if you couldn't tell. The concept behind the Nike SB Air Jordan 1s is one of my favorite concepts in sneakers in general. I love the fact that the more you wear the shoe, the more it turns almost into a different shoe and gets a whole new life of its own. And the fact that the shoe starts out with a pretty solid colorway and the more you wear it, it turns into an even better colorway is kind of like the cherry on top. To be fair though, although I like the shoe with the paint removed, I actually kind of prefer it with some of the paint left on, which gives it a really unique look. Overall, an awesome shoe and an awesome concept. Next, we've got the Shattered Backboard Air Jordan 1s. This shoe is obviously a lot of people's favorite, one, because of the color blocking on the shoe, but two, because it just feels like one of the best quality Air Jordan 1s ever made. The leather is soft and plush, and I'm sure you've heard the phrase, Shattered Backboard Quality, because for whatever reason, people seem to use this as a yardstick for quality on Air Jordan sneakers. I think it's a great looking shoe, and the quality, while nice, isn't like incredible. It's not the most amazing amazing shoe I've ever felt in my life, but I still think it's a really great shoe and I'm happy to have it in my collection. I'm also kind of curious as to why Jordan Brand put their softest leather on the Shattered Backboard colorway of all the different colorways. I don't really understand the reasoning. Then we've got the 2015 Chicago Ones. The Chicago Ones are quite possibly the most classic Air Jordan sneaker of all time. This is usually the shoe that people think of when they think of Air Jordans, and I've gotta say I understand the reason because it's such a beautiful sneaker. What can I say? I love the Chicago Ones. I think it's a great shoe. Although we've had versions and variations of the Chicago Ones drop recently, we haven't had a true Chicago One since 2015, and I really would love to see Jordan Brand come out with a remastered version with some slightly nicer leather. Who knows when that will happen Happen, but I'm sure we're due for an update pretty soon. Moving into off-white territory, we've got the off-white UNC ones. Out of every shoe in my collection, this is the shoe that I spent the most money on, and it's because I was impatient and I wanted to get a review out before anyone else and even though I spent a lot of money on it, I was still second, so that was great. That said, there are a lot worse shoes you could spend that amount of money on, and I'm still happy that I have this sneaker in my collection. I love the UNC color blocking, and I love the prototype look of the off-white collection. I also love these hits of orange on the Nike swoosh, and then I've tried to accent them with the orange laces that came in the box. Overall, a great sneaker, and one that I need to wear more often. Next up, we've got the off-white Air Jordan 1 Chicago's. Now, I'm sure if you were watching my channel a year ago, you've seen this shoe a million times. I talk about this shoe 
shoe all the time. The reason I love this shoe so much is not just because it's like some crazy hype sneaker and it's a great Chicago colorway. The main reason is because I actually got to meet Virgil Abloh when I got this shoe and he signed it for me, which is super cool. Of course the Off-White Chicagos are an excellent sneaker and of course they look great, but the fact that I actually got to sit down with Virgil and pick his brain for like 10 minutes was one of the coolest experiences ever and it just makes this shoe that much more special. Seriously, one of my favorite shoes and one of the coolest shoes in my collection by far. Next up, we've got the Union LA Air Jordan 1s in the black toe colorway. The Union LA Air Jordan 1 collab is one of my favorite collabs on a Jordan 1 sneaker of all time. They did such an excellent job on this shoe. The attention to detail is ridiculous. The super plush suede around the ankle that's meant to look like super worn in leather. The stitching that wraps around the back of the shoe to connect the two different parts together that even extends onto the tongue. The fact that you've got dual tone laces. Not only that, but I wore this shoe on my trip to Japan and the Philippines a month ago. And the memories that I made in this shoe are priceless. So this is a shoe that has so many good memories tied to it, I don't think I can ever let it go. And then rounding everything off, we've got the Storm Blue Union LA Air Jordan 1s. I love this shoe for the same reasons that I love the other Union LA Air Jordan 1s, and I love the colorway. Like I said, blue and red are my favorite colors. But the main reason I like this shoe so much is because of the memories that were made in this shoe. I proposed to my fiance in this shoe, whose name is incidentally Jordan, so a lot of People were tweeting that at me when I posted the picture. But that's what makes our collection so valuable and personal because of the memories that you make with those things that you collect. And that's why this pair of Storm Blue Air Jordan 1s is one of my favorite shoes in my entire collection because of the memories made in this shoe. Not because of the shoe itself, but because of what it represents. And let's be honest, it's a dope looking shoe. I can't deny that. But that wraps up my entire Air Jordan 1 collection. Now I would love to know which shoes out of this collection were your favorite, so make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.